Good morning, everybody. I hope everyone is having a good morning and getting a cup of coffee. And well, actually, it's not really morning anymore. It's 12 o'clock, so lunchtime. Maybe if um, you've already had your coffee, you can get some more. Or oh, there's already be one. Hey. Um, yeah, if you haven't had your cup of coffee, get your cup of coffee. Or if you have it and you forgot about it because you're doing stuff, this is the time to heat it up because we're about to dig into the word. Who's on? <gasps> Hello, Tori and Rosemary, Aunt Pam, Miss Joy, Jason. Oh, oh, thank you. Hello, good morning, everybody. Thanks for tuning in. I'm excited. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if any of you guys. Um, Hey, wait, who's there? I'm trying to figure this out. Papa literally just told me how to how to work and how to find people. Hey, Billy. Oh, hey. This is exciting. So, I don't know if any of you guys tuned in last night to um, Youth Night, but <clears throat> we had a really hi. <laughs> we had a really great night uh, last night. It was really good. There wasn't many as many teenagers as usually though. So, be praying for that. Pray that. Um, the teenagers that have kind of been not coming as much start coming in. Hi, Aunt Mandy. Good morning. Start coming in and um, <clears throat> because, um, um, yeah, but anyway, so <laughs> because <clears throat> I have a heart for teenagers and I have a heart for youth and I know the enemy wants to do everything he can to pull them out of the church and pull them out of community. And during this time, this teenage years, is when teenagers are trying to figure out who they are, what group they want to go to, and everything. So just keep that in mind as we're waiting for some more people to come on. Just be praying for, um, just be praying for um, just the youth, and just be praying that the Lord just protects them and puts their an his angels around them and brings and keeps them in the community, you know, and. Um, but, and continue to reach out to the teenagers, too, because, <clears throat> as I said, there was not nearly as many teenagers last night as usual. Um, and I don't know if there was just a lot of a lot of activities going on or events going on, but just be praying for that, because I know the Lord's calling the youth to a higher place, <clears throat> deeper levels and everything, and the Lord's got some mighty things for the youth, and, um, and the enemy's going to try everything he can to pull them out of the church and the community. So just be praying. That the Lord brings them back in and and just command the enemy's hands to get off of our kids and our youth, you know. Um, yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> um, but but yeah. And then tonight we have Wednesday night church. So if you're not doing anything tonight, join join for um, join for service tonight because it's gonna be really good. It's at seven. Um, but yeah, I'm excited to share the word today. I think, I don't know, I think it's going to be more spiritual and practical at the same time. But, I because I, I realized I was thinking to the Lord, I was like, okay, I kind of feel like this is more practical than anything. I mean, I'm using scripture and everything. It's, in, it's based in the word, but it's more just practical stuff. But then I was thinking, you know what? We also need, hey, Miss Bridget, yeah. Um, it's a party now. No, um, but we also need practical along with spiritual we need to know how to apply things and you know live everyday life you know but um there's 10 people on now that's exciting um but <laughs> but yeah I hope you guys are having a great morning um as I said if you just had you already had a cup of coffee get you some more coffee because why not you know why not it's not like, you know, it's the end of the world. Well, no, I'm just kidding. Um, but get your cup of coffee. But if you forgot about your cup of coffee, go ahead and heat it up so we can dig into the word alive and awake, you know. Um, but yeah, there's 12 people on now. Let's see, who are the 12 people? I'm not too sure. Hmm. I see all of you heads up. Okay. Hey, Papa is now on. I'm still drinking my first cup. Aunt Mandy is. Well, that's good. You might need to heat it up in a minute because it might get cold. 
um, that's how that happens all the time to me when I'm drinking coffee. I'll be like, I'll take maybe two sips and then I'm doing stuff and I'm like, oh wait, gotta do this and stuff. And then I forget I just poured coffee and I'm like, oh no, and now it's just freezing cold, but you gotta heat it up. It's like a routine every morning. Just keep heating up the coffee. Um, Maddie's on. I love you. Naomi is on. I love you too. Let's see. <gasps> Isabella. Hey, that's me. Um, <gasps> Miss Elizabeth's on. Uh, cause blood pressure. Don't tempt me. <laughs> no. Okay. No coffee. No coffee for Miss Elizabeth specifically, because we don't want that to happen. That'd be bad. Um. Hey, girl. Hey. Hey. <laughs> Thank you guys for um choosing to sit in and watch and listen. Um, cause I hope this word and what I'm about to, Hey Addy, <laughs> I'll be heating up my hot tea. Ooh, hot. I love tea too. Tea is very good. Um, it's probably, tea is probably better than coffee, honestly, but, well, um, I guess, I guess I'll probably get started soon. Um, um, let's see. But as I said, today, I guess it'd be more like more practical or practical and spiritual at the same time um, because I know for a fact um, our church specifically and I know most of you guys are either a part of our church or related to people in our church or part of our community because even if you're not at the church or at the church you, we still consider you community because you're coming in watching lives and everything and you're just being involved and we appreciate that but I know for the fact that our community our Word Outreach Revival Center community is called for higher things, called for bigger things, because it's in the name, World Outreach Revival Center. That means we're, we're a house full of ministers that are gonna go preach the gospel in any way that looks like. Maybe that's raising raising little disciples, raising the evangelists and the preachers and the pastors and stuff, and um, <clears throat> and or being the pastors and being the preachers and stuff, because um, because I, I know I know there's every, every, I, I just, I know that everyone in our church is called to higher things and greater things. And and with that comes knowing how to do things practically too, you know. So I really hope that this word just helps and encourages and, and just um, helps us with everyday life. Let's see. Let's see what she said. According to all the doctors I've been seeing lately, I have to drink this nasty stuff called water. <laughs> it is not delicious, but I'm trying. Good. Good. Drink the water. Hi Isaac, I'm glad you're on. Um, yes, water is <laughs> water is good. Even though we may not want to drink it, we would like to drink coffee instead or other drinks. Water is good and healthy, and hey, we gotta take care of our bodies. So, I'm gonna get started now because I think I've rambled enough. But before we dig in, I just want to pray. So, um, Holy Spirit, I just thank you for this opportunity, and I just thank you that um, you're here in this room and you care enough to to teach us and to correct us and to help us on this journey just to live out this life for you lord so holy spirit i think i, I ask that you just every word that comes out of my, my mouth is from you and that you guide me through this and let it be your agenda not mine in jesus name amen mm, there's like 10 people now that's sad but it's okay um so anyways we'll get started um this morning I was just talking because um, just talking to the Lord and I really just felt like really felt I just the title for this this word is um, drink the water Isabel yeah that's quote <laughs> that's a nice quote <laughs> um, where are we going where are we going um, <laughs> oh <laughs> sorry <laughs> I watched Dora because I have a lot of kids but I titled it as where are we going right and um, because, you know, Papa always preaches, like, there's, you know, we're, we're called the deeper places, higher places, like, you know, the Lord and revival, all this, stuff, like, this amazing, crazy things. Um, but individually, like, where are we going? And, um, and where are we heading? Like, what are we doing each day that is, that is helping us move forward and helping us to go? And where are we going? And I said this, I, I put this down, to move forward, we need to know where we are going. So, so I think, I feel like a lot of, a lot of even Christians kind of don't know the answer to this. It's like, okay, um, 
I'm just going to live out each day, kind of go through the emotions until something crazy happens or a specific word from the Lord says, thus says the Lord, go to Africa and, um, you know, nurse all the children to health and all this other stuff, right? Um, oh, hi, Riley. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, but we, but we need to know, we need to know where, we need to have a, have a vision and we need to know where we are going, right? Um, even if he's not specifically giving us a specific word, like right now, go here, right now, go do this and stuff. We need to know how to live out each every day, each day, I mean, each day um, to, I mean, we need to live out each day to fulfill the vision and to go towards where we're headed, right? But if we don't know where we're headed, then we don't know how to live out each day and each, like, we don't know how to live out each day, right? And I feel like a lot of Christians get stuck in this in this place where we don't know where we're going and we don't know exactly what is ahead. And so because of this, we become stagnant and we go through the, emo- the motions and we just, um, yeah, we just go through the motions and because of this, we get stagnant and we just kind of wait and we don't do anything like, yeah, we're working everyday life, but we just wait and we're not really, we're not really we're not really moving forward. We're just staying stagnant until there's a ripple in the waters, right? We, we're just staying just stagnant and just waiting and just waiting. But we want to move forward. We want to grow. We want to continue to move forward and to grow. But to do that, to move forward, we need to know where we are going. And so I want to go to Habakkuk. I think that's how you say it, Habakkuk. Me and Pablo literally had a conversation before this thinking, okay, how do we really say this? But that's what Google said, Habakkuk. So we're gonna go to Habakkuk too. And if you don't, if you're not familiar with Habakkuk, I, I challenge you to read it. It's really good. I literally discovered this book like maybe three years ago. Didn't know that this was even in the Bible until like three years ago. It's really sad, but it's really good because in the first, um, the first chapter basically, Habakkuk and is like asking all these questions, like you know, and then the Lord is like, okay, just wait. If I told you what was really happening. You wouldn't believe it, so just just wait. This is kind of what I'm doing, you know, a little bit, but I can't tell you exactly everything, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that's basically what that is, but I want to go into chapter 2. Because chapter 2 is when Habakkuk decides, okay, I'm going to stand and I'm going to wait and hear from the Lord, and this is when God answers. So, um, I'm just going to just I'm just going to go ahead and read chapter 2. And it says, I will stand to my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. And right there, that's when Habakkuk is like, okay, you know, I'm just going to wait. I'm going to be in a posture to sit and listen and wait on the Lord and and to hear him, right? And so verse, uh, verse two says, then the Lord answered, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak, and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. So, um, so with that, the Lord's saying, write the vision, make it plain, um, and, uh, that he may run who reads it. And for the vision is yet for a point in time, it will surely come. All that, right? So this is my challenge to you because this is just something practical, but I feel like we all need to do this and it's not really talked about. I challenge you, everyone that's watching or going to be watching, I challenge you to invest into a notebook that you're going to love and going to write in, like you're gonna want to write in. Like me, I got this nice notebook. It says, you can't really read it, because it's backwards. <laughs> it says good vibes only. Woo! You know, it's pretty painting and stuff. You know, it makes me want to write in it. You know what I'm saying? So that's my first that's my first thing to you. <clears throat> Invest in a good notebook that you're gonna want to write in. And this is gonna be your little special notebook for what we're about to do. And this can be like an act an activity with the Lord. You know, how exciting. Um because um we need to know exactly where we're going and where we're headed. <clears throat> so we need to know exactly where we're going and where we're, um, where we're heading and what we are working toward. <coughs> I don't know why I keep coughing. Um, so to do that, we need to write, we need to write down, we need to write down like 
who we are and what we want to become. And so, because I, I want to I wanna just use that. It says, write the vision, make it plain on tablets that he may, um, he may run who reads it. Um, so I, I, just, I just want you to like get this notebook, get a notebook or whatever, get a notebook and write down, okay, who do I want to become? Because that's, that's our first thing. Because, you know, um, we know who we are. Our identity is found in the Lord. And if you don't know who you are and you don't know who the Lord says you are, read in the Bible and ask him directly and he will tell you so you can have that kind of foundation. But next step is, okay, where am, where am I individually? Where am I headed? Okay, who do I want to become? What's the vision for my life? Like, where do, what, what kind of person do I want to be? What kind of legacy do I want to leave? So asking yourself that, and I want you to, like, write that down in your notebook. Okay, what kind of person, at the end of the day, like, my legacy, what kind of person do I want to be? Okay, that's your first thing. What kind of legacy do I want to leave? What kind of person do I want to become? And so... Um, because I think I think I believe that doing that and writing, okay, who we are, who, who we want to be, will kind of give us a vision. Like, okay, what are we working towards? This is who we're working towards, you know. Because this whole thing, this whole life, is all about growing and becoming better and cutting off the things that don't belong, cutting off the yuck, cutting off uh, the things that just are not glorifying the Lord or preventing us from. Um, hey, Mr. Brett, um, preventing us from doing what the Lord has called us to do. Um, we need to better ourselves. So doing that, we, we should write down the vision of who we want to be, right? So um, I want to go down to verse 3. It says, for the vision is yet for an appointed time. The vision is yet for an appointed time. You're not going to be the person you want to be right then and there. I write it, I write it down. This is who I want to be. This is where I'm headed. I'm just going to write it down. Boom, I'm this awesome person, right? No, that's not really how it goes. There's a process to it. Don't you just love the processes? Embrace the processes. Um, but for the vision is yet for an appointed time. This is this is ahead. This is what we're working towards. This is who we want to become. Um, for the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. It will surely come. And that's why we need to write it down. That's why we need to make it clear, okay, where are we headed? What kind of, because that's the first thing. What kind of person do we want to become at the end of the day? You know, because the Lord, you know, you might have so many different prophetic words, like I'm called to be this, I'm called to be this, I'm doing this and everything. But before that, you need to figure out, okay, what kind of person do I want to become individually? Because that's who people are going to remember. They're going to remember, okay, who do I want to be? And the way, and that's that's going to open up opportunities for you is going, being the, being the, the person that, you're, you're supposed to be and that the Lord's calling you to. We're called to a higher place. We're called to go to the deeper waters. But to do that, we need to take out the things that don't belong and we need to grow. And so I find that doing this, find that writing down what we want to be and who we want to be is going to help us have the vision like, okay, this is where I'm headed. This is who I'm growing to be. I'm not stagnant. I'm not just like waiting for the Lord. In this process of waiting on the Lord, I'm perfecting myself. I'm getting rid of the bad things. I'm I'm becoming the person I want to be. So, um, and so, uh, and this this is another thing. Um, when you're writing it down and you're with the Lord, because um, just when you're doing this, t get your notebook, talk to the Lord, sit down with the Lord, and just write down. Okay, who do I want to be? What's the ultimate vision of like who do I want to be? What kind of person do I want to be? What kind of character do I want to have at the end of the day? Um, who do I want to grow to be? Because, I mean, I, I'm sick of people saying I'm only human. I'm, you know, I mess up. I do this and stuff. No, no, no. We're trying to perfect ourselves. We're not trying to just stay stagnant water and just wait for the little ripple of the Lord saying this is what you should be doing. No. In this process, we're growing. We're, we're, we're pushing ourselves to the higher place. So this is the time <clears throat> to write out what we want to be and who we want to be and so we know where to go um because the lord's calling us a higher place so that's the only way to get to those higher places right to grow and to 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 take off the things that don't belong maddie this is for us charlotte and i were saying this morning and yesterday we want to write down our weaknesses and the things we struggle with so we can um 
uh, be asking God to help with us. I'm, I'm reading Maddie's thing. Oh, no, where'd it go? Um, so we can help with us writing and laying down if we want to be calm. Just right. Oh, that's awesome. Confirmation. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. So, um, um, I, yeah, because I, I hope this all makes sense. Because um, I feel like this is more practical that we need to be doing, you know. Um, as ministers, as normal Christians with a normal, raising a normal family, just like doing, we need to do this so we're not stagnant and we're not just waiting and we're not just, we're actually doing something in the process of waiting and growing. Um, so, um, so Psalms 37, four, I want to read this real quick. Psalms 37, four says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. So when you're with the Lord and you, you get your get your notebook, this one's mine, get your notebook, write down with the Lord, just, I mean, sit down with the Lord, sit down with the Lord, and yes, you can ask him, okay, Lord, is there specific things that you want me to grow in? Like, what kind of person do you want me to be, you know? Um, but don't depend on hearing exactly what he's going to say. Just write out, write, write from your heart. Right? What is your heart? What is your heart wanting for you to do? Like, what do you desire for yourself to be? Is it to be more selfless? Maybe in the past you've, you know, you've had struggles actually laying yourself down and being a servant and stuff. Do you want to be more servant-minded? Okay, cool. Let's write that down. You don't really, I mean, because you don't really need to listen for the Lord to tell you exactly what he wants you to be. You know, like he... Because it's, it's going to probably take a while. I mean, unless you have a crazy vision and crazy. I mean, you can write from your heart. Write down what you want to be. Who you want to be. Okay? I want to be someone with a servant minded. I want to be someone that everyone feels welcomed. I want my house to be a place where people can come and dwell and feel, feel safe. Um, I want to be someone who is reliable, dependable. You know, like stuff like that. And so we know, okay, this is where we're headed. So we're writing that down. And so that verse, Psalms 37, 4, it said, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. Um, I think that means, I mean, Jesus dwells in our hearts. If you're, hey there, chosen ones. <laughs> um, so if you're, I mean, if you're a Christian, the Lord lives in your heart. Isn't that wonderful? It's beautiful. But he's also placed desires in your heart. He's placed those desires in your heart. So everything that you're desiring in your heart and the things that you want to be one day and the things you want to better yourself, he's placed those in your heart. What? So when he's saying, delight yourself in the Lord, delight myself in the Lord, you know, delight myself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires and petitions of your heart. But we don't, we need to know what are the desires and petitions of our heart? What are they? Like we say the scripture a lot, but what are the desires of my heart? What are the desires you've placed in my heart, Lord? And so that's why we should write it down. We should write out who we want to be. And so, um, so I, I after this, I pro I might come to the comments and type out what I'm about to say, so we can actually go back to it. What is that, Miss Nikki? I don't. Yay, Miss Nikki. Um, <laughs> so, um, let's see. Um, so I have down first, I said, write down the person you want to be, okay? Just take the time, sit down, get your coffee or your hot tea. <laughs> um, sit down in a quiet place, get your notebook that you just bought, that you want to write in, and sit down and say, and just to ask yourself, what kind of person do I want to be? What kind of legacy do I want to leave? Um, and I want to write, I want to read to you guys um, what, I, what, I, what I wrote um, I, I wrote this, I got this notebook when I was a first year at the Ramp School of Ministry because I was just like, you know what, maybe I love, I love asking questions and I love, um, digging deep inside myself because, you know, why not? Like, <laughs> figure yourself out. Hey. Um, so I, I got this notebook my first year of the Ramp School of Ministry and I decided, okay, let, let this be a book of me asking myself questions and just realizing okay what's actually inside of me and what can I bring out and what can I grow in and everything so <clears throat> in the first the first page I said this is my this is my first year of the ranch school ministry um it says what kind of woman do I want to be and I asked myself this I said okay what kind of woman do I want to be what kind of person do I want to be okay 
And this is what I put. This is just an example of, you know, it can, yours can look different, yours, you know. I put, <clears throat> I want, because I know myself and I know things that I can grow in, so that's why it's, you know, personal. Um, I want to be fearless and not let anything stop me from doing what I know I need to do. I want to be a risk taker in the kingdom, of course. I want to be bold with my clothing choices and my words. I want my words to penetrate and cut deep and allow them to be straightforward, f straight from the throne room. I want to be independent. I want to be able to do most things on my own. I want to be fearless when I'm alone. I want to be comfortable in awkwardness and be confident. I want to have great posture. I was like, see, like practical stuff. I mean, because my posture, I'm tall, so posture, yeah. I want to make healthy choices. I want to be motivated and passionate about anything and everything in front of me. I want to be welcoming and have a warm tone with others. I want to have a nurturing, nur <laughs> have nurturing motherly arms that are always be waiting to be embraced. I want to be organized and be a planner. I want to be a listener more than a speaker. I want to be approachable and I want to be one who approaches. I want to walk in confidence in any and every situation. I want to be clean and fresh every day. I want to have clean, long nails naturally, because I bite my nails. Shh. Um, so that's something that I'm working on. Um, I want to be loving with the loving like a mother. I want to be a woman who takes in the orphans and teaches them the way they should go. I want to be a woman of creativity. I want to build furniture and create paintings for interior design. I want to be a handy woman in case I am alone and by myself. I also want to be available in case other people need me. I want to be an even bigger dreamer. I want to be filled with dreams and inspiration where I can just pour my ideas out to other women to take and, and use. I want to be someone who stops dead in their tracks when, um, when tempted to talk about someone or gossip. Ooh. I want to be a woman so filled with love that it overflows in the into the lives around me. So that was my that was what I wrote my first year of our of the ranch school ministry. Um, just figuring out myself and figuring out my identity and figuring out okay where am I headed as a human as a person as me Isabella Shoemaker where am I heading what kind of person do I want to be because I mean we need to know that before we take on all the responsibilities and ministry and all this other stuff like who, who am I like what what's actually the desires of my heart what actually do I love to do what do I want to do you know like what what kind of person do I want to be and so but looking the cool thing is looking back on this I can see certain points where I'm like I've grown in that that actually check mark for that hey I, I, I can do that now whoa I've actually been trying to do that lately you know and it's something I can look back on like okay am I am I growing in this area how how am I taking each day to become this person and to 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 um, to grow in these ways right and so um, and then I put think so you know we just wrote down what kind of person we want to be right and so the second one is think about what you're passionate about and call and then write your own personal mission statement because I know we have there's a lot of like we have a lot of mission statements um, I don't I don't know where mine is um, oh yes I do um, we have a lot of mission statements um, with big organizations big churches and everything but what is your personal mission statement but you can't you don't really know your personal mission statement until um, until you know who you are and to know and until you know what what am I what what do I desire what am I righteously angry about like what am I passionate about you know because we can get lost in the world thinking that we have to do this every single day we have to do these things and everything but take time to just figure out okay what's really inside of me because every single one of you it, there's things inside of you that other people don't have there's ideas and dreams inside of you that no, nobody else can see or put together like the Lord put those desires in your heart he lives in your heart so those desires are in there for a reason you know um and so think about what you're passionate about and call to do and then write your own personal mission statement and I like to I mean I I kind of followed the lines of like the mission mission statements of our youth ministry like you could you could kind of use the guideline like okay this is what a mission statement is how can I you know, make my own, right? 
mine I, I wrote mine and I'm still I'm I fixing it up I'm using it and everything I'm making it longer and all this or I'm making it shorter like I'm just editing it as we go hey Savannah um and so right now this, at this moment this is pretty much my 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 mission statement it's I exist to use creativity to bring healing and wholeness to broken and abused women and teenagers and then activate them to become disciples so that's my personal mission statement and so I know this is how I'm living my life. This is the kind of person I'm becoming. That, that's where I'm headed. You know why? Because in that mission statement, creativity. I think most of you, hey, Miss Ruby, I think most of you guys know I, I love to be creative. I love skits. I love to create things. I love to paint. I love to make necklaces. I love to write poems and sing, um, write songs. I love creativity. Like That is a big part of me. And so I know I exist to use creativity to bring healing and wholeness to broken and abused women and teenagers. I have a heart for women and I have a heart for teenagers. Like, and I mean, for men too, but you know, we all have different arenas where we're like, that's where we're directed to. And I know I'm specifically directed to women altogether and teenagers. Like those are my, those are my, my, my things. And so I know the Lord's going to use creativity to bring healing and wholeness to the women and the teenagers I'm called to, and then turn them around, activate them, make them disciples, you know? So, and maybe you're called to just be a mom. Like, that's amazing. That's absolutely amazing. What kind of mission statement as a mother of however many kids you have, what kind of mission statement do you want to live out each day? What's your goals? Like, what is what is your mission today? What is the vision that you want to do? And what kind of legacy do you want to leave? Um, and so, so with that, I hope I hope that I hope that kind of you know clicks or whatever or uh, helps because I know this helps me because sometimes I can be really overwhelmed. Um, and then ask yourself questions that help you know you. All right, and in the same same book, you can actually you can actually update it, right? More pages up. Okay, this is also who I want to be. Like this is the kind of character I want to hold. Like oh, I love you too, Savannah. Um, this is the kind of person I want to be when I'm talking to people. This, you know, because after after all that, what kind of woman I want to be? The next page I wrote, what do I burn for? And so I I wrote um, like you know what do I burn for? Young women. That's my first thing. Young women. And I explain how, like why, and where does it come from? What, what do I want to do for the young women? What, you know, stuff like that. And then the second one is broken homes. I'm really passionate about just f finding, having healing in broken homes where there's no dad, there's no mom. Just, you know, and why does your heart break from that? Like what, what's going on there? What do you want to do to help and stuff? And so just stuff like that. And then I have this one page that says, what do I value in life? You know, and I know this sounds, hey dad, um, I know this sounds really like practical and maybe kind of odd to what you were probably expecting. And I'm probably, yeah, I'm probably going really long, but I'll, I'll finish soon. Um, but so that you're probably like, this is really kind of practical. It's not really that spiritual or whatever. But I know that this, oh my gosh, this is so important to know who you are, what kind of desires you have in your heart and to know what are you motivated and passionate about? Like, yes, ministry is good, like all, all this stuff, but the Lord also put desires in your heart for a reason. He, he wants you to have the mindset of, okay, how can, I, how can I, I live out each day fulfilling these goals, fulfilling this vision that I put out for myself, that the Lord has helped me do that? Like, how did I do that? Like, for this one, I said, um, what do I value in life? And I wrote down, okay, what are the things I value? Like, and then for this one, it says, what do I need to work on? And I'm writing it down, and I'm continually updating it. Like, okay, okay, now that I worked on this or something, okay, let's move on. What now? You know, what am I passionate now? Has it changed? You know? And um, and then ask your, you can ask yourself, like, okay, um, how does this stuff make me feel? Like, what is it? You know? And so, because knowing yourself and knowing, okay, what's really inside of me really, really helps us get a clear vision. So I challenge you to sit down and have, get you a nice notebook that you would love to write in and write down these things. Write, write down the person you want to be and write with the Lord because um, he put those desires in your heart. He lives in your heart. He's putting all those desires in your heart. 
And because you might be either two things. You might be the person, okay, I don't know where I'm headed in life. I don't know what kind of vision I got. I don't know any, like, I don't have any dreams, aspirations. I'm just, li I feel like I'm just living each day, you know, doing whatever. No, the Lord still has dreams for you. And this is that time to figure them out. This is that time to sit down and realize, okay, what am I passionate about? Um, what do I do? Like, what, what are things I desire? What do I kind of, what do I enjoy doing? What, you know, figuring out, okay, what, it, what makes me angry sometimes? Like, what, what makes me righteously angry? Hey, you know? So you could be that person that you really just need to know, what are my dreams? You know, what 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 are my desires, right? Or you could be the second person, which is me, hello. Um, the second person, you could be someone who has lots of dreams and lots of visions and lots of uh, things that you wanna do. And like me, um, I have, there's so many, like I'm a huge dreamer. So I have so many ideas and so many dreams that are just everywhere and just all over the place. Um, and I can't, I just, and I don't know where I'm going. I'm just like, oh, I just want to do this. I want to do this. I want to do this. I have this. I want to, I want to, you know, all these big dreams and stuff. But I know that the Lord put all of those dreams and desires in my heart for a reason. And this, this helps me writing them down, writing everything that's going on. This helps me pinpoint what are the things I'm going to be participating in out of the, does all of these desires that he's put in my heart. What are the things that he wants me to activate and make happen either now or later on or participate in? Or what are the things that I need to cultivate and give to somebody else down the road? So I know for a fact the Lord has placed all of the desires, everything, but I know I can't be confused on um, what do I need to do? What do I? Writing it down, okay, what's, what are the things the Lord wants me to pinpoint? What, what are the things that the Lord actually wants me to activate and make happen? And what are the things that I just need to cultivate and give to somebody else down the road? You know? Because um, he put them all there for a reason. So, I, I really, I really hope, I really hope you learn something. I mean, we all can um, learn something from this and grow because I know we're called to higher things. And sometimes getting to those higher places and those higher things, we need to just focus on the practical sometimes. Like, what are things I could be doing each day? to get to that vision, to get to what I'm going to become one day or making those dreams happen. Um, what am I working towards? So we're not stagnant and we're not just living each day life every single day in the motions. And the last thing I put is set goals. Set goals, set short-term goals, set long-term goals, set goals that you are able to achieve. They can be um, goals for the week. They can be goals for um, the month. They can be a goal for the whole year or something. Set goals that will help you become the person you want to be and, and help um, uh, help you to step into all of the fullness the Lord has for you. Set those goals. If you, like me, in my thing, I said I want to be a planner, a better planner. How do I do that? I'll get a planner that I would, I would enjoy planning and putting stuff in and being organized. And I'm going to set a goal and set a date that maybe Sundays are going to be my day that I plan out for the week. And that's going to be my goal each week is, you know, um, or <clears throat> if you want to be an organizer, if you want to be a better organizer, um, get you some nice bins that you're going to want to organize in or labels that are going to make you want to organize and set a, set a time that like by this week, these two rooms are going to be organized. This, you know. And if you want to be more selfless or more servanthood, um, say, okay, by this time, I'm going to um, clean this for people or I'm going to um, go buy this for somebody. I'm going to go serve at this. I'm going to ask, um, our, ask our pastors where I can help at the church, where I can serve. I want to be, I'll be an usher. I'll, you know, um, I'll come and clean the church. Just stuff like that, like setting those goals. You know, because first is writing the vision, making it plain, where we're headed, what are we doing personally, individually, what kind of person do we want to be, having that vision, okay, that's first, writing the vision, making it plain, and then second is, okay, um, let's, let's, let's set those goals now, let's set those goals and make those achievable goals to get there, because those desires, all those desires, the Lord put in our hearts, so, Anyways, so 
I'm probably talked a lot, but I really hope you guys um, could learn from that because I know without this, um, without this, we can get really overwhelmed and really like just confused. I literally, literally last night I got to a place where I was just like, wow, I took on a whole bunch of responsibilities. I took on a lot of things that um, are overwhelming. I don't know how I'm gonna do this, but I had to go back to, okay, where am I heading? Okay, um, what kind of person do I wanna be? How is this, you know, um, how is this helping me get there? Um, and just realizing like, okay, I'm going to be okay because this is where I'm heading and the Lord's got me and I'm going to like today actually I, I planned that today was going to be the day that I prior, prioritized everything and just had made a timing for everything um, figured out okay these are my priorities right now these are not you know just doing that so just because um, we, we will mess up and it's it's one of those things but this I hope this helps helps us all have a focus and a vision of where we're headed, where we're going, and how to get there. I'm only 20. I don't have kids or a husband. So I just want to throw that out there. I'm still learning this whole process. I, you know, and so, um, so if you have, if you, if you're married and have kids and stuff and you want to try to implement this in our life, I would love to hear like how you're doing it and how, what, 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 how different yours could be because yours could be really helpful too. Because I mean, I'm, I'm literally only 20 and I don't, I'm not married. Um, but I just say that as we're all learning and we're all growing and anyway, so I really hope this helps you guys out and, um, that we can all learn from this and go to higher places because greater things have yet to come. So I love you guys and thank you for joining in. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for joining in. You could be doing absolutely anything else, but y'all decided to tune in to Isabella Schumick, and I appreciate that. So, God bless you. I hope you have a great day, and I love you guys. I'll see you on the flip side.